Okay, so we're going to continue to talk about some angle relationships uh, in circles. Uh, we've already talked about uh, a central angle, but let's review. Um, a central angle is an angle where the vertex of the angle is the center of the circle. For instance, if you look over here, um, our angle uh, R O P, this angle right here that I'm drawing the red arc, that would be a central angle. O is the center of the circle, and O is also the vertex of that angle. So the central angle here would be uh, angle R O P. Okay, and remember something, the angle, the central angle, is always going to be equal to its intercepted arc, the arc RP. And RP, let me switch to a marker, would be this arc right there. It went a little bit too big, but that arc right there. So that angle, angle ROP, that central angle, and that arc that intercepts it, they are equal. In other words, if angle ROP equal to 120 degrees, then our arc RP would also equal 120 degrees. Okay. Um, then we had an inscribed angle in the last lesson. Okay. An inscribed angle, the vertex of that angle, the vertex of the angle, is on the circle on the side on is on it's on the side of the circle okay we go over here to our drawing you have uh, angle r q p this angle right here okay this blue arc that i'm making i'm shading the vertex okay that is angle r that's a q there in the middle r q p that is an inscribed angle. And its intercepted arc, well, it's the same uh, arc it's the same arc that uh, RP was while it goes. It's still the same intercepted arc. The difference is, is that the inscribed angle, RQP, is equal to one half what the arc is, RP. So, in other words, uh, up here we said that the central angle was 120 and that arc RP equaled 120. Well, what is half of 120? If our arc RP equals 120, what is half of that? Well, it's 60, so the angle would equal 60. So, again, to kind of review, uh, the relationships between the angles and their intercepted arcs. Uh, remember that central angles are equal to their intercepted arcs and inscribed angles are one half their intercepted arcs. Okay, so we'll kind of review there. All right, well, we have a new uh, theorem or a new rule, okay, and it's uh, the tangent angles, okay, and I'll read it to you and then we'll do some examples together. Uh, the tangent intersected chord theorem. It says, if a tangent line and a chord intersect at a point on a circle, then the measure of each angle formed is one half the measure of the intercepted arc. And the reason why is because the angle that is formed or the angles that are formed uh, are inscribed angles. And the inscribed angle is equal to a half of its intercepted arc. Well, just to kind of look here at a few things. First of all, this line right here that I'm drawing the air, black arrow to, that is the tangent line. Okay, remember what a tangent line is. A tangent line intercepts a circle at, or touches a circle at one point. And so this line here is touching the circle at point A. And then you have your chord, and I'll switch to blue. Your chord is this uh, segment that is starting at B and it's going to A. Well, 
A, remember, is the point of tangency, so that chord and the tangent are touching each other at A. I'll circle A. That's where they're touching. That's where they're intersecting. So when that happens, it's forming two angles. You can see here you have angle one and angle two. Well, whatever those two angles are, um, here uh, angle two is intercepting this big arc here, arc B, C, D. And angle one is intercepting this other arc here, B, A. Well, whatever those angles are, they're going to be equal to half of their intercepted arcs. Okay, and you see they've written it right here. In other words, if I told you that uh, we'll, we'll stay with angle one. Um, angle one is going to be equal to one half of its arc, which is the arc AB. Well, just if I gave a measure, let's say I told you that angle one, let's just say that I said angle one equaled 50 degrees. That's what angle one equals. Well, isn't the arc AB... Well, it's it's half the size of the angle, but it's the arc is always going to be double. So, wouldn't AB have to be 100? Because the angle is 50, so it takes two of the angle measures to equal the intercepted arc, right? So you got to be able to go either multiply by two if you're going from angle to to arc, or if you're going from arc to angle, you have to divide by two. All right. Well, let's do some together. Okay. In this first one, uh, we have a, a tell us in the directions that uh, they tell us in the directions right here that line M is a tangent line. Okay, so we have our tangent line, and B here that's our point of tangency. Uh, AB is our chord. Okay, let's write that that AB is a chord. Okay, and B is the point of tangency. So we have a chord and a tangent line intersecting, right? So that means that our angle is equal to one half the intercepted arc. Well, here they want us to find what angle one is. They want us to find this angle right here. There's where angle one is at. Well, isn't this arc, I'm going to switch to blue, isn't this arc right here, arc AB, isn't that the intercepted arc? So the measure of angle one is going to be equal to one half its intercepted arc, which is 130. Okay. Well, what's half of 130? Well, 130 divided by 2 is 65. So angle 1, the measure of angle 1, equals 65 degrees. Okay. Go to B. Again here, uh, they give you, this time they give you the angle measure. They tell you that this angle here uh, that, that has the vertex of uh, L, the angle on this side, is 125 degrees. Well, this arc here, KJL, that is the intercepted arc. Well, here we know that the measure of uh, angle L is equal to one half the measure of the arc, arc KJL, which that's what they want us to find. Well, let's plug in what we know. We know the angle equals 125. Okay. Well, since we know the angle measure, to go over here, don't we need to double? Because we took half of the arc to get 125. So if we got to go work backwards, we need to undo dividing 2. So wouldn't we go 125 times 2? And so that arc, KJL, equals So we're going to do, um, I'm going to do number one with you for some more practice, and then um, I'm going to have you guys practice. All right, so um, line M is the tangent line, so this is a tangent line, and then we see this uh, line right here, this segment right here, that is a chord, and so it's touching, and then we have this angle one, so that's what they want us to find is angle one. Well, this arc here, that is the intercepted arc, and it equals 210. Well, isn't the angle equal to half of its intercepted arc? So I would go 210, and I would take half of it, or divide by 2, and you would find that angle 1 equals 105. 
Okay, look at the next two problems, two and three. Here they want you to find an arc. So that means we're going, they're going to be giving you the angle and you've got to find the arc. So remember, when you go from angle to arc, you double. So on these two, make sure you double or times two. So you guys do number two and number three. And let's see if you can come up with the answer. Uh, when you get the answer, uh, raise your hand and the substitute, or hopefully me, um, will come by and check. Okay, uh, we have uh, some things we're getting ready to get into with some, some of our intersecting lines. Okay, uh, If two non-parallel lines intersect a circle, there are three places where the lines can intersect. Uh, first one is they can intersect on the edge of the circle. Um, the second one is, is they can intersect somewhere inside the circle, uh, not necessarily the center, Okay, but somewhere inside the circle. And then the third and final place is somewhere outside the circle, at a point somewhere that's outside the circle. Okay, well, now, on my iPad, it goes to this uh, part, uh, other angle relationships. It actually has, on your paper, is right there. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the uh, next page, because that's how it shows up on my iPad. So you're given two theorems. That's what is at the bottom of your page that wasn't on my previous page on the iPad. But you're given two theorems. Okay. The first one is um, when the angles are inside the circle theorem. Remember we said there was three places that the lines can intersect in a circle. Either outside, inside, or on the circle. Well, we're going to deal with when it in, in, intersects inside the circle. Okay. When you have two chords intersect inside a circle, then the measure of each angle is one half the sum. What does sum mean? It means to add. It's one half the sum of the measures of the arcs intercepted by each angle and its vertical angle. Well, let's take all this gobbledygook and make it uh, make sense. So let's look over here. Um, we have these two angles here, angle one and angle two. Uh, angle one is dealing with arc DC and arc AB and I'm going to change colors and angle 2 is dealing with arc AD and arc BC those are the intercepted arcs that deal with that angle well what does this theorem mean well let's deal I'm going to stay in blue so we're going to deal with angle 1 okay if I wanted to find angle what angle 1 equaled Okay, if I wanted to find out what angle 1 equaled, well, I could take one half the sum of its two intersected arcs. Well, isn't arc AB and arc DC the two intersected arcs of this angle, angle 1? So, I would go AB, that arc, plus arc DC. And when I would add those two together, and I would divide by... 2 or multiply by a half and that would be the measure of angle 1 and we'll do some examples here in just a minute the key is is knowing where is the intersection well, if the intersection is inside the circle you're going to find the angle you go one half times the sum of the two arcs well what happens if the intersection is outside okay and as you can see there's three different uh, examples here um, but if a tangent and a secant, or two tangents, or two secants, intersect outside a circle, then the measure of the angle formed is one-half the difference. What does difference mean to do? It means subtract, right? So, that's, uh, let's look at these different things. And there's a bunch here, so I'm going to go slowly. Okay, The first one. Angle 1, this is the angle that is formed by these two lines here. You have this line and this line, and they're intersecting at a point that is outside the circle. Well, if I wanted to find ang what angle 1 is, then I would take one half the measure of the difference of the two arcs. But this is where it matters, the order. When you sub do subtraction, make sure you subtract what would be the bigger arc. 
look at these two arcs. You have this arc here that has the blue. Well, you didn't get blue, but AC. And then you have this other arc here, BC. Well, which one of those arcs is the bigger arc? Right, BC. BC is the bigger arc. So if I'm going to subtract those two arcs, I want to list BC first. So as you can see here, they went arc BC, see me underlined it, is subtracted from the smaller arc AC. And whatever that is, when you subtract those two arc measures, you take half of it, and that's what angle one equals. And so they did some examples. You can see they continue to do the same thing, but I want you to notice what arc is listed first each time. Isn't it the, when you look at the diagrams, isn't that arc that I'm putting in blue, isn't that the large arc of the two arcs they're dealing with? So when you do the outside, make sure you put the smaller arc or the bigger arc first when you subtract their totals. All right, well, let's do some problems together. And actually, this did not print out very good on my iPad. Uh, but example two... I hope you can see it. It, it. it looks fine on your paper, but it looks kind of funky on mine. So it's going to be kind of hard for me to draw, but I'll do the best I can. But here they want us to find X. Uh, X is that uh, central, that's that angle there that's formed by those two chords when they intersect. Well, arc KL, the, one, the arc that is 156, and arc JM, those are the two intercepted arcs that deal with that angle. And where's the intersection of those two chords? Is it inside, outside, or on? Well, it's inside, right? And so anytime it's inside, we're going to do the sum, or we're going to add. So what we're going to do so that we can find what X is, X is that angle inside this form, okay? X is going to be equal to one-half the sum of the two arcs. Well, remember, one arc is KM. The other arc is JM, okay, and so now I'm ready to go. So, that's still X, that's what we're trying to find, that's still one half, and one of the arcs is 156, arc JM is 130, so I'll add those two together, and when I add those two arcs together, I get 286. Now i got to take half of that, and so when I take half of that, I get 143, and so that's what X equals, is 143. That angle inside is 143. All right, let's go to part B. Well, B's a little different. Um, again, they wanted me to find uh, X. X is, there's the angle right there where X is at. It's representing that angle there just for, that uh, has C as a vertex. Well, where's this intersection where's point C at as far as it relates to the circle is it inside outside or on the circle well it's outside so anytime that the intersection is outside we're going to do the difference or we're going to subtract okay so uh, here's one arc arc DA is 178 and then we have our smaller arc DB which is 76 well we're trying to find X, which that is the angle that is outside, and it is equal to one half. But here we're going to subtract. And remember, I said when we subtract, we want to put the different or the larger arc. Well, the larger arc is the one that is 178, which is arc DA, and it's going to be subtracted from arc DB, which is 76. Okay, so I'll go ahead and subtract that out. 178 minus 76 is 102. I take one half and I find that X equals 51. So this angle outside here is being formed. Angle C is 51 degrees. All right, so I'm going to do, actually you're going to do number four and five, I'm sorry. You're going to do four and five, but I kind of need to lead you in, in the in a 
direction a little bit. They only give you parts of the information, but really they give you everything you need. The angle inside they give you, they tell you that this angle here, that I'm drawing this blue uh, shading in, that is the angle that is 102. But to deal with this arc that is 95 and this arc that is Y that they're wanting you to find, don't you need this angle right here that I'm shading in red? Well, this line's intersecting those two lines. Well, don't two lines make supplementary angles? So if I know one of the angles is 102, isn't there a way that I can find what the red angle is? Yes. So you need to do that. And then you remember, where's the intersection? Well, it's inside. Well, then when the intersection is inside, remember that it's one half the sum of your first arc plus the second arc. So you guys do number four and see if you can come up with the answer and then do the same thing for number five. Now number five, the intersection is outside so remember you're going to subtract. And also another hint, which one of these arcs, the arc two arcs that I'm shading in red, which one of those is the bigger arc? That's right, this one is. So that needs to be listed first when you do your, your subtraction. So do four and five and see if you can come up with the answer. Alright, and at the bottom of that page, there's these two on my iPad. It flipped it to the next page, and I don't know why, but it did. Uh, but there's a couple things here talking about circumscribed. Okay, a circumscribed angle is an angle whose sides are tangent to the circle. So, for instance, right here, angle B is being formed by two tangent lines. Okay, you can see that C and A are the points of tangency. And I want to remind you, this is something that we learned uh, in either the first or second section, that any time we have a uh, point of tangency that is, or uh, two tangent lines that intersect outside a circle, remember that those two segments, AB and CB, are congruent. Don't forget that. And then we have this circumscribed angle theorem. It says the measure of a circumscribed angle is equal to 180 minus the measure of the central angle that intercepts the same arc. What they're talking about here is this central angle right here that I'm shading in red. Okay, It is to figure out what this intercepted arc here, I'm talking about this arc here that goes from A all around to B, okay? Whatever this central angle is, if you subtract it from 180, it will give you that arc, or it will give you the, uh, if you take this arc, whatever this measure is, and you subtract it from the central angle, it will give you this angle right here. In other words, um, if I redraw this object, okay, that's not a very good drawing. Let me start over a little bit. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase all this because I want to be able to draw it nice and neat. What they're talking about is this. Let's say I told you that this central angle was 100. Okay? And then I told you that this arc right here, okay, was 250. Okay? Well, it says the measure of a circumscribed angle, they're talking about this angle right here, is equal to 180 minus the measure of the central angle that intercepts the same arc. Because this angle here and this uh, central angle here intercept this arc. So what you do okay, is you take the central angle, which is 120, and I'm going to subtract it from 180. Or, and 180 minus 20 is 60. And so what that means is, is that angle D equals 60 degrees. All right. And we're on our last page. All right, 
So, six and seven. Uh, I'm going to do six, and then I'm going to have you do seven. So, what they're wanting us to find is they're wanting us to find this angle here. And notice it's being made by two tangent lines, so it's, circumscri it's a circumscribed angle. They give us this central angle. Well, this is a lot like the example that we did, right? So, this is the intercepted arc. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take 180 minus the central angle, and that equals 60. And so, that's what our circumscribed angle equals. It equals 60. Alright, so now we're done with the notes. Um, when you're finished with the notes, go ahead and begin with the lesson that is attached. Uh, many of you, as I've been entering grades, are starting to get behind. You're not turning in stuff. Um, you need to get on this and get stuff turned in. Uh, you guys are going to get so far behind that you're not going to get caught up. So uh, you need to get busy.